Yo, 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 so look, got another tutorial, you know, that fast, so look, first off, make sure you download the file that's in the description, you're gonna need it for this tutorial, so, go ahead and open that up when you, uh, extract it and stuff, and when it loads for me, look, alright, so you're gonna be greeted with this, so, as I went over in the last tutorial, it's already rigged and all that it's going to be another character tutorial so yeah yeah, yeah. all right so select any part of your character and make sure this material is gone okay so just select the part and do this boom boom and that 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 Alright, so once that's done, you want to go ahead and select any part of the body and then click new and to create a new material. Let's rename this to character texture. Now what we want to do is you want to make sure that the arms and everything are using the same texture. So select everything besides the torso. And well, make sure the torso is not your, your last selected and then press Control L and then click materials. That's how you make a link between the item, between the object materials to make sure they're all the same. So if I go into my texture mode, if I go into shading, as you can see, it's all one material, one texture. All right, so Next thing you want to do is do what we did last time. Let's go ahead and create our little uh, backdrop. So shift A, go to mesh plane, press S to scale, and then press SX to scale again on the X axis. Make it a little bit longer. That should be straight. Let's X, I mean, press S and, and Y now to make it scale on the Y axis, make it longer. And that should be straight, so. Select your plane, go to tap to go back into object mode. Select this edge over here, press E to extrude it, and then press Z on the uh, Z axis to make it up. Go over to this side. That should be good. Let's select our little uh, edge right here, press Control B. And as you can see, that's very, uh, it's very bad right there. So press tab to get out, to get back into object mode. Press Control A and reset its scaling. Then tap again, select the edge, Control B, much better. Scroll up on your mouse wheel and that should be fine right there. Select your object, shade smooth, and there's our backdrop. Now what we want to do is we want to uh, texture our character. So make sure at the top left corner, we drag it out right here to create a new window. And in your editor type, make sure it's under shader editor Press N to hide this thing and press Shift A and look for image texture. Let's drag this into the base color. Now let's open and find your character's texture, what's already right here for me. And bang. And there we go. If you don't see your uh, texture, make sure it's in texture mode. All right. Now what we want to do is press Shift A, look for normal. Wait, nope, wrong thing. Shift A, look for bump. And that should be fine. Press this, I mean, to connect this to normal and put your color into the height channel. All right. That's goody, that's goody. Now what we need to do is import a little helmet or something. Say you exported something and you want to import it here in texture. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So go to file, import, and usually it's going to be an OBJ format, but the uh the file that's in the the uh, zip is in fbx so file import fbx and then grab the corinthian helmet and as you can see it's nowhere to be found just make sure it's selected right here make sure 
you can either go into the scale mode or just press S and then they get bigger. Ooh, snap. Let me just control Z to go back. S again. S, you just want to scale it to this big. And then go ahead and drag it up. And let's see. Press the Del. I mean, not Del. Press the uh, period on your um, numpad. And let's press scale again. Let's bring it down. Make sure it's even. it down some all right that should be fine right there and as you can see it came with a material just delete that add a new one name it ultimate Corinthian or I me mean, name it Corinthian helmet all right then that's fine right there and now we want to do is see how we look in our editor mode I mean shading mode if your shading mode, I mean, if your rendering mode doesn't like this, make sure you're in cycles and make sure it's on GPU or compute if you have a decent GPU. All right, so we have no lights, of course. So what we want to do now is go back into our shading mode, press Shift A, and let's grab ourselves a regular light, area light, <laughs> said regular. Let's go ahead and bring this over here, rotate it, then press, nope, let's not press S. Let's go into our light properties over here. And then let's uh, size it up. And make sure you're uh, on use nodes. Size it up more. And who'd that be? All right. All right, scale it up a little bit more. Then press Shift D to duplicate, then right click, and then let's just drag it over here. Let's press R. Z and type in 180 to rotate 100 degrees. I mean 180 degrees, and that should be fine right there. And let's go into shading mode and see how we look. And as you can see, it's not really doing anything. So let's just up the strength. All right, that's fine right there. Bring it up a little bit more. Same over here. A little bit more. All right, then press Shift D again to duplicate it. And then let's bring it up here. Press R, X, or any R, Y to rotate on the Y axis. Make sure it's facing down. Bring it like this. This is like your basic light setup. You can really play around with it, to be honest, to get whatever kind of result you want. You don't have to go with this all the time when you're lighting. Now let's see how we go in rendering. And we have some decent lighting, decent lighting. Let's go ahead and hide this backdrop. So to select it, go into its object properties and uncheck camera under the visibility, rate the visibility. All right, cool, cool, cool. Now, if we rotate the head, see, or just rotate the body, our helmet isn't moving with it. So to fix that, you just select the helmet first and then select the head and press Control P to parent it and make sure it's object, okay? And then when you rotate the head, it rolls with it, same with the body. And you do this for whenever you're, uh, Connecting, I mean, parenting an object. If you want it to move with the head, etc., etc. Hands too, it works the same way. Select the object, select the hand, then Control P, and click Object. Now what we want to do is texture this our helmet. So let's uh, bring it out. Go into Shader Editor, and then let's let's uh, hold on. Let's just change this right away. So under surface, let's choose glossy since like it's pretty much a metal helmet. Well, it is a metal helmet. So you just want to make it a glossy BSDF. And then let's change the color to somewhat gold. Let's go into our render mode. And that's a little bit too much. That's perfect right there. 
more more bronze, more bronze here. Alright. And now what we want to do is we want to give it a little more detail. We don't want it to be just one rough value all over. So there was an image file that came into the uh the zip file. And what you want to do is just go to Google and type in grunge texture. And you can really just choose anything that looks cool. This is the one I got. And just save it to your desktop. And then shift A, image texture, put that in the roughness, open, and just grab it. And as you can see, it's 100% reflection. I mean, 100% like pure reflection, but yeah. So to fix that, we can just press shift A and type in RGB curves and put that right here or just connect connect so now what we can do is just drag this up I mean you can really play with it for any grunge texture you have so yeah as you can see it looks like we got like rough this car like some good uh some good detail I guess around it and then that's straight right there and that's pretty much what you want to do for like all your like metal objects. Say if you're going for a sword or any item that's like a metallic surface, you just do the glossy BSDF and just put a grunge texture. Now let's fix up our character texture. So remember how we had the normal map like this. So let's go ahead and bring it to specular maybe, turn on roughness a bit. Let's pose our character. So. Let's select them, rotate. Meh. Side, side. Let's go back into our rendered mode. And now what we can really do is just keep playing with the lighting in our pose. So a good thing to do is just create a random light. So shift A, let's go to lights and do point light. This is called rim lighting where you pretty much just place like, well, you pretty much just spam whatever lights until you find what looks, what looks good. So let's bring it like this. Bring it back some. the color a bit maybe then shift D to duplicate and just bring it one on this side and So you, it's pretty much just experimenting with the lights, okay? That's literally all room lighting is, just finding what works.
And there are times where you may want to be consistent with the colors of your light to kind of match a theme or whatever. So yeah. And that's how you do manual lighting, aka rim lighting and all that other stuff. And I can probably play with my character material more. Down to roughness. But yeah, that, yeah, that's uh pretty much it. So you want to make sure you follow this method for like pretty much anything that involves a single character render. I mean, you can also do it for scenes too, of course, but that's for a different story, a different day. But this is pretty much as like, as far as as it gets gonna get for like single character renders. You can see how easy and basic the lighting was. Let me bring this leg over kind of fix that up right there all right so just take away lighting from this and the texturing of the helmet so just 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 those two really and then if you don't know when you're done just uh go up to your settings right here and make sure your render uh samples are 1000 and then when you're ready just click render and render image also make sure your background right here is transparent so you can get a transparent background <laughs> in your editing ed editing Psh. yeah and then make sure under your scene settings it's an rgba art mean R red whatever rgb alpha and color depth at 16 and don't worry about the compression and then render all right there's one thing i forgot one very important thing Go to add, let's do shift A, and camera. Let's make our second window again, and let's go into our shader editor. Nope, <laughs> I'm so dumb. 3D viewport, keep it at that. And then go into the second, or whatever viewport you want to, and press zero to go into camera view. Then in your other viewport, just drag this out. And let's see how we look. Yep, there we go. And then when you're done with that, just go ahead and click uh, render, render image. When it's done, image save as. And then there you go. That's how you, that's character rendering extended, if I want to call it that. So yeah, I, I'm out. Peace.